okay for enzymes okay enzymes these are compound which are usually proteins they act as a catalyst so pag sinabing enzyme catalyst yan for a biochemical reactions pag sinabi nating catalyst they causes for they causes the reaction to be a uh, million times faster than the corresponding uncatalyzed. So, pinabibilis nila yung biochemical reaction. Without them, uh, very slow ang reactions. Now, catalysts, as catalysts, enzymes are not consumed. Hindi sila kasama dun sa pag-convert ng reactant sa product. Okay? Pero nandun sila sa reaction to help uh, or to make the reactions occur more rapidly. So, pag sinabi nating enzymes, say, for example, we have reactions A plus B will give you AB. Okay? Walang enzyme dyan, hindi siya reactants at hindi rin siya product. Okay? Yang ibig sabihin nung hindi siya nakukonsume, hindi siya na to turn from reactants to products. Rather, nandito siya usually. Enzyme. So, pinabibilis lang niya. Hindi siya nakukonvert as product. Okay, so the word enzyme comes from the Greek word en, which means in, enzyme, which means yeast, in a yeast. So, kasi yung unang, unang ginamit na enzyme is the yeast in the production of bread and alcoholic beverages. So, yung yeast na dinadagdag natin pag gumagawa tayong tinapay o kaya pag gumagawa ng wine, okay, or any alcoholic beverages, okay, they serves as a catalyst. So, during this fermentation reaction, carbon dioxide is produced, which causes the bread to rise. Also, carbon dioxide is also produced during fermentation of sugar. Okay? So, enzymes, since nasabi natin that it's a protein, of course, mag undergo din siya ng denaturation. So, recall natin ano yung denaturation, what are the substances that causes denaturation for proteins will also denaturize enzymes. Okay, so slight alteration, magbago lang ng konti ang pH, temperature, o kaya nag vigorous shaking ka lang. Okay, this will affect the enzyme activity dramatically. Okay, so malaki ang effect. Kaya nga kapag gumag nag-ferment tayo ng rice wine, okay, dapat kailangan medyo hindi masyadong mainit yung kanin na paglalagyan natin ng bubod. Okay? Kasi nga, the temperature could affect the enzymes. Okay. So, for the classification, just like the protein, okay, meron din tayong tinatawag na simple enzyme and conjugated enzyme. So, pag sim nating simple enzyme, sorry, pag sinabing, sina pag sinabing simple enzyme, uh, composed only of proteins or amino acid chains. Pag conjugated naman, of course, meron na tayong non-protein component. Yung non-protein component na yan, tawag natin dyan ay cofactor. Tapos, yung protein part naman niya ay apoenzymes. Meron din tayong term na tinatawag na holoenzyme. They are biochemically active conjugated enzyme. Okay? meron tayong tinatawag na coenzyme. Pag sinabi namin natin coenzyme, this is a cofactor. Remember, cofactor is a non-protein. Coenzyme is a cofactor from made from organic molecule. Okay? So, pag cofactor na yan, merong organic tsaka may inorganic. Pag organic, tawag natin coenzyme. Ano yung mga inorganic na cofactors? They are ions. Say, this is uh, zinc, magnesium, manganese, and iron. Okay, so, tingnan natin ito. So, sabi natin, we have enzymes. They serve as a catalyst. Pag sa classification, may simple enzyme. Purely, ang components sa structure niya ay proteins. Pagdating naman sa conjugated enzyme, meron tayong non-protein uh, non part. Okay? Tapos, ang ating hollow enzyme, this is a biochemically active enzymes. Co conjugated enzyme. Sa conjugated enzyme, meron tayong apoenzyme and cofactor enzyme. The apoenzyme is the protein part and the cofactor are the non-protein part. Cofactor could either be organic and inorganic. Pag sinabi natin organic, ayan, meron siyang, ang tawag sa kanya ay coenzyme. Madalas natin 
ma-encounter yung word na coenzyme. Coe, okay? For this nomenclature of enzyme, paano natin papangalanan? Okay. So, define muna natin. Ano ba yung sinasabi nating substrate? Ito yung reactants na kinakatalyze nung enzyme. So, this is a substance to which the enzyme acts upon. Okay? So, alam natin, substrate, yan yung pinag-aakal nung enzyme. So, how do we name them? The suffix, yung ending, ASE, defines the substance is an enzyme. So, parang kwan lang din. Parang yung ating glu uh, carbohydrates, they end with OSE so that they will be defined as sugars. Yung alcohol natin ends with OSE. OL, to define that they belong to alcohol part. So, ganun din yung nomenclature ng enzyme. Meron din siyang fix. So, pag ASE, enzyme siya. Okay? Like urease, enzyme for urea. Sucro, uh, so, sorry, this should be sucrase. Sucrase as an uh, enzyme for sucrose. Lipase, an enzyme for uh, lipids. Okay? So, may ASE sila sa dulo. Pero yung mga nauna, first encountered or first enzyme being studied, they end with IN. Okay, yun yung mga, yung mga nauna na discover. Like trypsin, pepsin. Okay, pero yung mga recently encountered, recently studied enzyme, they end with ASE. So yun, kanina, meron siyang suffix na ASE. Meron din siyang prefix. Yung prefix naman yung nauuna sa pangalan niya. Usually, this denotes the type of reaction. Okay, so like oxidase. Oxidase, the prefix is oxid, meaning it's for oxidation reaction. Hydrolase, uh, the prefix is hydrol, meaning this is for hydrolysis. Okay, so hindi lang yung substrate um, na identified din sa pangalan, kundi yung processes or reactions din na kung saan sila ginagamit. Now, the identity of the substrate is noted in addition to the type of reaction. So, example, glucose oxidase. So, makikita mo rito, from the prefix oxid, that's oxidation, of course, ASE, that's an enzyme, and the substrate being used is glucose. So, therefore, malalaman mo from the, pang, from the name itself, glucose oxidase is the enzyme for the oxidation of glucose. Okay? Pag sinabi namang aspartate amino transferase, so amino transfer, this is, the process is the transfer of amino group. For aspartate. So, siguro, this one is uh, amino aspartate are the enzymes used for the transfer of amino group in aspartate. Succinate dehydrogenase. So, dehydrogenase. Dehydrogen. So, that's the removal of hydrogen in succinate. Okay? So, with their names, you could actually predict the substrate and the reactions they are being used. Okay, as a catalyst. Now, infrequently, substrates are not substrate, but not the reaction type is given, like urease. Pag, pag substrate lang binigay, usually daw, this is, the, the process is hydrolysis. Pag sinabing hydrolysis, you add, you add water, because it's hydro, with the reaction with water, lysis um, splitting into two. So, yung urease daw, nag act upon siya sa urea para ma-broken down yung, yung structure ng urea. And lactase, this is uh, the enzyme or used for the hydrolysis of lactose. Okay, kasi yung lactose is a disaccharide. So, ibibreak niya yung uh, bond between the monosaccharides. Okay? So, we have classification of enzyme based on the types of reaction they catalyze. Okay, so we're going to have uh, six, six classifications. We have first oxidoreductase coming from the prefix oxidoreduct. We have process of oxidation reduction. So subclasses, ano ba ang mga oxidoreductase? We have oxidase, which is used for the oxidation of a substrate. Reductase for the reduction naman. And dehydrogenase is for the removal of hydrogen in a substrate. And once hydrogen will be removed, alam natin that double bond will be formed. Kasi we are talking about 
we are talking about uh, organic compounds here, biological comp organic compounds. So, kapag nagtanggal tayo ng isang hydrogen, of course, hindi na masisatisfy yung four bond requirement, kaya makuform si double bond. Just to get, again, the four bond requirement, even for a fact na tinanggal na yung hydrogen. Now, we also have transferase. Anong trans ano ang mga transferases? These are enzymes that catalyzes the transfer of a functional group from one molecule to another. So, meron silang tinatransfer. Transaminase. Transaminase, the transfer of amino group. Kinase is a transfer of phosphate group naman. Pag hydrolase, hydrolase, this is a an enzyme that catalyzes hydrolysis in which the addition of water is used to cause bonds to be to break okay so lipase hydrolysis of ester linkage in lipids protease so bring break nya yung amide linkage sa protein nuclease Hydrolyzes the sugar phosphate ester bond in nucleic acid. Carb carbohydrates. Hydrolysis of glycosidic linkage in carbohydrates. And phosphatase. Hydrolysis of phosphate ester bond. So, ulitin natin pag sinabing hydrolysis. This is addition of water so that linkages or bond will be broken. Kasi nga lysis means to break. Okay, lyase, okay, lyase naman tayo, hindi lysis, ah, lyase. Lyase is an enzyme that catalyzes the addition naman of a group to a double bond. Of course, kapag, kapag mag a ka sa double bond, of course, to accommodate the substance being added, kailangan ma-break ma natin yung double bond. Para magkaroon ng free band at doon yung free band na yon doon ma attach yung groups being added. Okay? Or, lyase could also be for the removal of a group to form, yung vice versa naman, removal of a group to form the double band in a manner that does not involve hydrolysis or oxidation. So, kung hindi oxygen at hindi water ang idadagdag, okay, so lyase naman. Just to have, just to recover the double bond. Okay? So, example would be dehydratase. Dehydratase is the removal of water. Okay? Decarboxylase, removal of carbon dioxide. Deaminase, removal of amin, uh, ammonia or amino group. Hydratase is the addition of water from the substrate. Isomerase coming from the word isomer. So this is the isomerization. These are the enzymes for isomerization. When we say isomerization, these are the re rearrangement of atoms. Not necessarily na magtatanggal ka ng atoms kasi nga isomers by definition are compounds with the same molecular formula. So pare-parehas yung count ng mga elements niya. It's just that yung rearrangement or arrangement ng, ng structure niya ay nagkakaiba. Okay? So, isomerization into another. So, isomerase, kinoconvert daw niya yung isang molecule into uh, is its isomeric uh, other isomers. Okay? So, ano ba yung mga example niya? Race maze. Race maze is the conversion of D isomer to L isomer. So, recall niya yung D glucose magiging L glucose. So, magkaiba si D and L. And kailangan natin ng enzyme for that is a race maze. Then you have mutase. Mutase is the transfer of functional group from one position to another in the same molecule. So say for example, yung hydroxyl group na sa carbon number one. Gagamit ka ng mutase, ito transfer mo yung hydroxyl group, which is the functional group sa carbon number two. Okay, so within the molecules also. So... Of course, if that is, uh, kung originally nasa first carbon atom siya, tapos naging second carbon atom yung attachment ng hydroxyl, of course, that would be classified as isomers.
And then we have the last ligase. Ligase are the enzymes that catalyzes the bonding of two molecules into one with the participation of ATP or energy. Okay, so kapag magkakatalyze ka, magpo-form ka ng bigger molecules from two small molecules, of course, kailangan natin ng energy. And examples of this are the synthase, sorry, synthetase. So this is the formation of new bond between two substrates. So pinag-connect niya. We also have carboxylase. This is the formation of new bond between a substrate and a carbon dioxide. Okay, so for the two models of enzyme action, we have lock and key model. These are very fixed geometric. Uh, the active site has a very fixed geometric shape. So only a substrate with a matching shape can fit into it. So parang kwan lang yun nga, lock and key. So kung ang, ang pwede lang pag-act upon ng enzyme na yun ay yung specific para sa kanya. Okay, so say for example, yung ating um, sucrase. Sucrase is just only for sucrose. Fix lang na para sa kanya lang yun, lock and key. While as for the induced fit, the active sites are flexible. So say for example, kung ang, so that it could accept the variety of related substrates. So an example of this is, uh, adenylate kinase yung itong, itong adenylate kinase na to ay pwede sa ATP, ADP, AMP so pwede siya, flexible siya, pwede siya kahit anong alin sa mga yon ang pag-act upan niya okay for the enzyme activity this is the measure of the rate at which enzyme converts the substrate into a product in a biochemical reaction so ano ba yung nakaka-affect sa enzyme activity number one, temperature Okay, the rate, the reaction rate increases with the temperature until the point at which the protein is denatured. Of course, the higher the temperature, sana, uh, pero hin, um, the, the faster rate of reaction. Pero, hindi pwedeng ma-reach na yung point na madedenaturize na siya. Otherwise, of course, the activity will drop. pH, okay, so the measure of acidity and basicity also could um, affect the enzyme activity okay so outside the pH range of course with denaturize the enzyme concentration of substrate the reaction rate increases with the substrate con concentration until full saturation occurs and concentration of enzyme of course the rate of reaction also increases with the increasing enzyme concentration okay now, we have vitamins. Bakit kailangan natin i-discuss ang vitamins? Kasi nag, um, very important ang kanyang role sa mga ayan, cofactors. So, sabi natin kanina, cofactors are the um, organic part of the conjugated enzyme. So, i-discuss natin si vitamins kasi nga, they are very essential in small amounts for the proper functioning of the human body but since they cannot be synthesized in the body they must be consumed or obtained from the dietary sources okay so kailangan kailangan natin ng vitamins kasi nga yung part ng vitamins ay na incorporated sa mga cofactors that is very important in any biochemical reactions okay so we have classifications of vitamins we have water soluble and fat soluble Water soluble includes vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid. Okay, so very important na yon ang mga vitamin C because um, it functions siya as co-substrate in the formation of structural protein collagen. So, um, pwede rin siya for, very important din siya for the uh, bone and teeth formation. Also, it serves as an antioxidant. For vitamin B, ito ang pinaka-importante among vitamins kasi nga they serves as a cofactor. So, there are 8 vitamin B vitamins. We have thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, B12, pantothenic acid, or B5, and we have biotin. Okay, so unlike vitamin C, 
all the vitamin B are chemically modified before they become functional within the coenzyme. Ito yung sabi ko, parts sila, yung B vitamins, magiging parts sila ng coenzyme. So, for thiamine, ang part siya ng coenzyme TPP, riboflavin, part siya nitong MFN and FAD. Itong FAD, ma- ma- ma-encounter natin to ng madalas in the next chapter. So, next chapter is uh, biochemical reactions. So, FAD is flavin adenine dinucleotide. Niacin is also important as B vitamin kasi nga in, kasama siya sa structure ni nicotinamide and adenine dinucleotide. So, itong FAD and NAD, very important yan sa biochemical reactions natin as well as coenzyme A. So, ma- mad- uh, madalas nating i-discuss yung FAD, NAD, and CoA. So, the riboflavin, niacin, and pantothenic acids are the B vitamins that are very important in the biochemical reactions. Of course, equally important din itong mga ito. Okay? So, so, Okay, the second, the second uh, classification of vitamins are the fat or lipid soluble. So many of these fat soluble vitamins involve processes that occur in the cell membrane. So we have fat soluble vitamin A, D, E, and K. Kaya ang sa kanila ay ADEC. Vitamin ADEC are fat soluble. Now, if we have to compare water soluble from lipid soluble, in terms of absorption, okay, so directly absorbed in the blood ang ating water soluble, yung vitamin A, vitamin, ah, sorry, vitamin A, vitamin, sorry, C and B. Okay, tas ito naman si ADEC. Okay. Uh, so, fat soluble naman, they first entered, how, how they are absorbed, they first enter into the lymph system. For the transportation, uh, water soluble vitamins are, are tra- travels without carriers. While for fat soluble, kailangan nila ng protein carriers. For storage naman, they are, they are stored or circulate in the water filled part of the body. While for the fat soluble, syempre, nandun sila sa may fat, fatty part. For the excretion, ito, excretion removes, uh, water soluble are easily removed as an excess in urine. So the kidney removes them. While as for fat soluble, so kung nagtitake ka ng vitamin A, vitamin E, they tend to be stored in the fat storage site. They remain, hindi sila na-excrete sa body. Whereas, pag uminom ka ng vitamin C or vitamin B, iihi mo lang yan. Uh, Mariremove sila sa system mo through uh, sa urine. Toxicity, not not likely to reach toxic levels. Kasi nga, ayun nga, na-excrete mo naman. Okay? Especially if you are, they are consumed from supplements. For fat-soluble, they tend to reach toxic levels. Kaya nga dapat in moderation lang yung pag-take ng vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins. For dosage or frequency, uh, needed in frequent doses. Pag sa fat naman, should be taken in periodic doses only. Relationship to coenzyme ito, they could function at coenzyme, especially the B vitamins, and of course the fat-solubles, they do not function as coenzymes.